Have you ever shown someone a grid only for them to react with disgust? Do you do no damage for reasons beyond your comprehension? Or maybe you're new to Grand Blue and you want to understand exactly how to get the biggest numbers. Well, you're in the right place. This video is a tutorial on the fundamentals behind grid building in Grand Blue Fantasy. We'll be going into the mathematical formula that determines the final attack stat, learning about damage cap and then finally getting into some examples at the end. I'll do my best to keep it brisk but the subject matter at hand is complicated no matter what. I'd recommend getting comfy and grabbing a snack. We're going to be here for a while. Part 1 Weapons and Summons A party in Grand Blue Fantasy is composed of three things. The characters, weapons and summons. When we refer to a grid, we're talking about the weapons and summons for a party, as those provide a vast majority of our stats. Without a grid, no matter how powerful our characters are, they'll be hitting like wet noodles. In the name of fully understanding team building, let's break down weapons and summons into their components. Here's our example weapon, Evanescence. We have our base stats here, these can be increased by the level of the weapon and plus marks. Here we have our weapon skills. These amplify stats in various ways and are the main reason why we choose weapons. Most skills scale with skill level which requires you to upgrade them with other weapons which have weapon skills. Weapon skills generally only apply to the element the weapon is, but there are some exceptions. Skills are important as you'll see later on, so make sure to max out the skill level of every weapon you want to use. Over here is the weapon type, which can be deceptive when compared to the visual. Characters who match weapon types will gain 20% more stats from the weapon, but this isn't particularly impactful so don't worry about it too much. Lucifer will be our example summon. Here are his auras. Main auras are active from the main and friend summon slots, while sub auras are only active from other slots in the summon grid. Here is his call. This is basically what happens when you activate the summon. Summons don't have skill levels, so you only have to worry about their actual level. There are also two extra slots in the summon grid called sub slots. These are summons that can't be called and only exist to grant you additional sub-auras. Generally for main auras, there are two main types that you'll be utilizing. Elemental summons are ones that increase your elemental attack, with the most common biz choice being a fully transcended Lucifer. There are also main auras that boost weapon skills. They are called Optimus and Omega summons, but you might hear them referred to as Primal and Magna. Returning to our example weapon, Evanescence has two weapon skills that would be boosted by Zephyrus, while the third cannot be boosted by anything. Let's put these two together and assume you have a grid with one copy of Evanescence and Zephyrus as your main summon, alongside a second Zephyrus as your friend summon. This grants us a total 400% boost to normal skills. With a skill level 15 Evanescence, this grants us 12% chance to crit and 14.5% attack which become 48% chance to crit and 58% attack respectively after the boosts from both summons. Part 2. The Damage Formula Now that we understand weapons and summons, let's do some math. The first step to calculating the damage of a character is to find their total base attack. This step is simple enough, just add the attack values of the character, weapons and summons in your grid to get your value. This number can additionally be increased by plus marks and EMP skills, but thankfully the game does the math for you. For example, with this set of weapons and summons my Narmea has 70,006 attack. This provides us with the number that will be multiplied by various weapon skills and summon auras. So, now we're ready to see the damage formula. Let's give it a look, shall we? That's a bit of a doozy, so let's take it step by step. Firstly, Normal Boosts. Normal is the most common type of damage modifier, being granted by pullable weapons, character buffs and specialized craftable weapons. Normal is also split into three additional damage types, Normal, Stamina and Enmity. Normal is obviously just a standard damage boost, but Stamina and Enmity's boost scale with health. If your health is full, Stamina will be most effective. If you're sitting on the edge at a singular point of health, Enmity will be most effective. Since these damage mods are multiplicative with each other, 
it's fairly common to aim for two of these, normal and whichever is more applicable for your comp normal mods are also boostable by a summon, which in this case are Optimus summons. Just note that these summons need to be pulled from the gacha and that weapons with powerful normal mod skills will be coming from there too, so this is only recommended for whales, veterans or those who are exceptionally lucky. Be sure to consult others before making the plunge into going primal. There are also the Bahamut, an Ultima series of craftable weapons which have various normal mods, but these cannot be boosted by Optimus series summons. This makes them great for grids that don't use Optimus series summons, since their numbers are stronger to compensate for being unable to be boosted. Next, Omega Boosts. Omega mods are essentially the free-to-play version of normal and are the centerpiece of Omega grids. Similarly to normal, they are split into normal, stamina and enmity, and are boostable by Omega summons. However, unlike for normal mod weapons, all Omega mod weapons and the Omega summons can drop from raids, making it the go-to for players without the resources to go for Optimus setups. Unlike normal modifiers, Omega modifiers lack unboostable options or sources that come from character buffs, which make it easier to splash numerous other modifiers and have them all amplify one another. There are downsides to this of course. The first is your number of options. The number of Omega mod weapons is quite limited compared to the ocean of normal mod weapons, so Omega grids can have gaps in their options which can reduce the strength of certain types of teams. The second is the weapons themselves. Many Omega weapons have lower raw numbers than their normal counterparts, requiring the use of unboostable normal weapons to bring their final numbers to a similar level. Following that are YX boosts. YX mods are found on a larger selection of weapons than Omega mods, but are far rarer than normal mods. YX mods cannot be boosted and do not have any sources from outside the weapon grid. Some YX mods have conditions that you can meet to make them more powerful or even active at all. Generally these conditions are worth meeting, as EX mods are powerful, unboostable mods that will help you deal more damage. Most EX mod weapons are either grindable from events or craftable, with a few notable exceptions being in the gacha. Finally, we have elemental boosts. Elemental boosts have three main sources. By default, if you have elemental advantage in a fight you gain a 50% elemental damage boost. Another source are certain main summons, notably the Providence series summons. Elemental damage mods for main summon auras are very common and are a good choice while in the early game or for certain strategies that rely on evenly spacing out modifiers. The final sources are buffs, which are dependent on characters. Against null element enemies, it's recommended to bring a character that can increase your elemental attack so you can make up for the lack of elemental superiority. Once you find the total multiplier of each mod and then multiply them together, there's one final step to get our base damage. Critical Hits Crits can be scored against enemies that you either have elemental advantage against or null element enemies. Crit chance and damage vary from source to source, but if multiple crits proc their damage is additive with one another. Crit chance comes from weapon skills, buffs and character EMPs. A common tactic for grids is reaching 100% crit chance via weapon skills and having it act as a secondary normal modifier. Once this is combined with a third modifier, usually stamina, you can deal high amounts of damage with fewer weapons. Finally, there's Seraphic. The Seraphic modifier is granted by a few select sources that adds a final damage modifier for being at an elemental advantage. When doing elemental content, you should basically always have this active whether it be through the weapon grid or a few select characters. There are also a set of Arcarum summons for each element which grant additional Seraphic. These are recommended to be upgraded first over their health boosting counterparts as they apply a difficult to find multiplier to our damage. If we return to our formula from before, we can simply substitute our modifiers in to get our base damage. But before we can get to our damage result, we need to consider the boss we're attacking. Bosses have varying defenses, which gets in the way of our damage. Thankfully, this part is pretty simple. So, we're finally at the last step. We take our effective base damage and put it through the damage modifier of whatever attack our character is doing. For example, 
When doing damage with Fidio's second skill we have 6 hits of 150% damage. So if we just plug those numbers into our final formula we'll get something completely wrong. Astute viewers might have noticed a little number in brackets written in the skill description. I hope you aren't lost, because we have more to go through. Part 3. Damage Cap and Supplemental Damage Cap is a strange mechanic that limits all damage in Grand Blue Fantasy to varying degrees. What was likely implemented to be a bottleneck to avoid players becoming too strong has become another toy in the delicate balance of grid making. Damage caps are applied before seraphic damage, but since they vary based on whatever attack is being done, I've decided to show them as square brackets. Damage cap, sometimes referred to as soft cap, essentially acts to diminish the returns that each point of attack has on damage. As a character's damage reaches the damage cap, the amount of damage that can be squeezed out drops sharply. Passing the damage cap reduces the effectiveness of damage dramatically, to the point where the attack to damage is reduced to 1%. Back in the olden days, where reaching the damage cap was a Herculean task that could only be achieved by the strongest of players, needing to go further beyond wasn't even considered. But in the modern age of Grand Blue Fantasy, the damage cap is made to be pushed against as hard as possible. For demonstrational purposes, here is a list of every single version of damage cap I could find laid out for your viewing pleasure. This is excluding fight-exclusive cap-ups like sandbox weapon skills and guidebooks and every type of amplifier alongside other things that would come up in late-game comp building. But I value my sanity enough to not truly go through everything. I'm sure I've missed a few as well, but trying to list every single form of cap-up in the game is a futile task. The main point I want to get across is that you can't include every single type of cap-up into your grid, no matter how hard you try or you could try, but you'll end up hurting your damage instead. There's no point increasing a damage cap you can't reach. Supplemental is an additional damage modifier that adds flat damage to certain types of attacks. There are three types of supplemental, universal, skill and CA. Universal affects all direct damage while skill and CA only apply to skills and charge attacks respectively. Supplemental is applied after damage cap, making it a useful way of increasing your maximum damage output. They also apply on every hit, allowing them to greatly increase the output of multi-hits. It's important to note that although supplemental damage on skills and charge attacks are affected by seraphic, supplemental damage on normal attacks and additional effects based on them are not. This is inconsistent and annoying, but it's a balancing measure for characters with split autos. The point is that you have to change the formula a little for normal attacks, because Lord KMR said so. Supplemental is also not reduced by defense, making it a useful tool for certain difficult fights where it becomes challenging to hit cap because of a high defense stat. Not all supplemental damage stacks, so when building teams it's helpful to go visit the supplemental damage page on the GBF wiki to make sure you don't add unnecessary sources of supplemental. The caps for supplemental are 100k, 200k and 1 million for universal, skill and CA respectively so remember to run the supplemental that's important to your comp. Finally, there is the hard damage cap. This is a damage cap that limits the maximum amount of damage that can be achieved in one instance of damage. Generally this is only reached by extremely powerful charge attacks and is put in place so players can't find ways to skip important raid triggers or create goofy setups to one-shot bosses. Of course, this is highly ineffective and hasn't stopped the community from breaking the game. Generally this is set to 13.1 million or 6.6 .6 million based on the content you're doing. A very small subset of characters and weapons can increase the hard damage cap but these are limited to only increasing it for charge attacks. The effectiveness of total damage becomes 0.01% beyond the hard damage cap. While this makes it possible to exceed the hard cap, it's a negligible amount of damage that won't enter the four digits. This hard damage cap also affects supplemental, unlike soft damage cap. It's not often that hard damage cap is reached so I would not advise worrying about it until you actually hit it. Part 4.
bringing it all together. Now that we understand all that there is to damage calculations in Grand Lu, let me explain how the process of making a grid works. Firstly, we need to choose our comp which is usually based on the fight we want to do. Before crafting a grid, it's important to know what our damage sources are. Is it a comp that wants to dump 20 skills in one turn? Or is it a comp that wants to blast the full set of charge attacks every 12 seconds? The weapons we want to bring varies greatly between different types of comps, and the needs that certain fights bring. Secondly, you'll want to choose your summons. Some fights or strategies require you to bring summons which aren't ideal for helping your damage, but help with survivability, or let you gain a short-term benefit that is worth that trade-off. Main auras are especially important as these can greatly affect the calculations when it comes to optimal weapon grids. For example, in 0B3C comps you'll be required to run two Huang Long summons which will change which weapons are optimal compared to a more traditional double optimus setup. Finally, you'll want to choose your weapons. You'll want to maximize the cap up and supplemental for the main damage type or types of the comp alongside bringing a variety of damage modifiers that will be strong enough to reach the damage cap. Some fights might also need more survivability through HP and defense weapon skills. You'll also need to find a main hand for your main character that fits the comp, which can be difficult for some rarer weapon types. Then as long as you make sure to bring a seraphic weapon for advantage element content, you'll be golden. Let's go through a few examples. For these grids, we'll be looking at mid to late game setups which explore the fundamentals of grid building. For early game grids, there are plenty of examples on the wiki to copy. In this comp, we have Kengo and Vijra who both excel in rapidly firing off charge attacks alongside other characters that benefit this sort of playstyle. The first thing we'll be doing for our grid immediately is slotting in a Kanishich, which is the go-to main hand for using Kengo. As we are limiting ourselves to grindable options, we'll be running Levi main summon with an elemental friend summon. Generally for Magna an elemental friend summon is best for damage, and sometimes even survivability. Next, we'll slot in our Opus and Seraphic. Opus weapons are the strongest weapons in the game while also being versatile, so it's an automatic choice when making a grid. Ultimate weapons are the ideal weapon for Seraphic modifiers, so we'll be running that as well. As these weapons can be customized, we'll come back to some of the specifics of these two weapons later. The main star of the Magna Water show is Tyro's Zither. By putting three of these into our grid, we'll reach 68.4% CA cap up out of a maximum of 75%, which leaves the 15% CA cap up skill on our opus not particularly useful. Water also has access to Schrodinger's which grants us CA supplemental and CA hard cap up. We'll be running two of these to reach the 1 million CA supplemental cap while our HP is topped off. These weapons can be awakened as well, which grant extra stats based on which awakening type is selected. One should be awakened to attack to grant us a flat normal attack modifier, while the other can be whatever is desired. For this example, we'll be running defense to help us with our survivability. With this, we have two weapon slots remaining. One of these should be an EX weapon, which there are many options for. We'll be using a reflection of the moon to give us the 5% generic cap up. In our last slot, We'll be running a Bahamut weapon to further increase our unboostable normal mod. Now that we've filled out the rest of the grid we can get back to our Opus and Seraphic. For Opus, we'll want to take the skill cap key with stamina as our third skill. Generally CA comps utilize skill cap better than auto cap and the Magna stamina serves as a new mod outside of our current Magna attack and normal attack mods. For our Seraphic we'll be running an Ultima Katana as it can provide benefits to both our Kingo MC and Vajra, and give us a slight bump in EX thanks to the Schrodinger's Voltage skill. The first key on the Ultima will be Stamina to add another modifier to our grid and the second will be the Chain Burst Cap Up key since Chain Bursts generally tend to happen when your comp enjoys charge attacking. The final key is the Seraphic key, giving us a 25% amplification against fire enemies. For the rest of our summons, we're going to prioritize powerful suboras to help us deal more damage per turn without needing to press any additional buttons. We'll be slotting in the moon for additional seraphic, Belio for the supplemental, 
Beelzebub for his cap up on RMC and Gabriel for her cap up to the team. Our team is also somewhat lacking in HP, so we'll be slotting in a justice to slap a band-aid on that problem. For our friend summon, the main two options for this comp are a high level Lucy for the additional sustain and health or Benito for the quick first turn damage that can be done with its call. The concept of this composition is to utilize the strong auto-based buffs of Spartan with a falsehood opus main hand to slam out a set of 6 autos to do as much damage as possible. We'll be running Bubs as our main summon to set up a defense down and bore and a Zephyrus friend summon to balance out our modifiers. For our grid we want to grab every form of generic supplemental, generic cap up and amplify we can. That means after the opus main hand and ultima. We'll be using two gale wings and a combination of folding fans and clams. The exact number of these weapons can vary but due to how clam functions, not every single one of the remaining 8 slots can be filled with these if we want to activate the first skill. We also wouldn't want to as this grid is very light on actual modifiers outside of EX. The ideal weapon to help with both these issues is Destiny Knuckle which is the most slot efficient stats stick in wind which also has some synergy with the HP reduction from one of the Spartan skills. The grid I ended up with looked like this purely because these are the weapons I had but a third folding fan or second Destiny Knuckle would have likely been more powerful than a third clam. The opus in this case is the Magna Opus which ends up being mathematically superior thanks to the multiplicative nature of numerous modifiers and the Ultima is a dagger with seraphic modifier to cap out the Voltage EX skill from Gale Wings. Our summons are specifically tuned to have Saboras most useful for bursts. This means we're running Raphael for his cap up, Judgment for the seraphic modifier and both Belial's for the supplemental and counters. The debuff from S. Belial's Subora also activates the backline passive of Catcellia, which grants us an additional damage multiplier. AWR gives a small bump to our Optimus modifier and Temperance increases our HP so we can hopefully make use of the free counters. The cap up keys on our Opus and Ultima are auto and skill as they are the most prominent damage in the comp. With this combination of generic cap, special cap, Supplemental and auto attack amplify we get something that looks a bit like this. For this composition, we'll be making the grid to fit the characters generally brought to Cosmos. As Cosmos requires a constant supply of debuffs, charge attacks and multi-hits, the ideal characters are those with constant multi-hitting skills with debuffs and recasting charge attacks. What you'll usually be running involves a Chaos Ruler main character and a Fedial, so we'll build around that. Chaos Ruler generally does better with weapons that focus on skills while Fedial is good with both, so we'll focus on supplementing our multi-hits. First we slot in two copies of Pain and Suffering alongside our Opus to maximize the general supplemental, grant us 14% general cap and get us 2 Axe Voltage 2 skills. As we want to lean into this source of EX, we'll be running two copies of Babel Mandeb alongside an Axe Ultima in our extra slots to give us the maximum 80% effect. Two copies of Bab El Mendeb can also give us 100% crit chance in our grid if we run two copies of Hades as main summons alongside a sub summon Fedial. Since we're running a double sided Hades composition, two copies of Skeletal Eclipse become a powerful option to give us a large amount of skills supplemental and cap, although this slot can be replaced by two copies of Agonize. 
This leaves us with three slots in our main grid, one of which is the main hand slot. Ideally, these slots are populated with eternal signatures. But personally, I only have one copy, so I instead use an unheal to give us some charge attack cap up and health. Our main hand in this case will be Parazonium to give the whole team echoes to help us clear hit count moments. As for the remaining extra slots, the first will go to Pain of Death for the additional EX modifier and health. The second is a Cephia Emerald Reaper for the Magna modifier, although any weapon with a Magna modifier could go here as long as it can fit into the extra slots. As for our summons, we have our usual sub-aura suspects such as Beezlebub, Belial, Death and Serial alongside the Fidial mentioned earlier. The final summon is Uriel as the end of the fight requires numerous charge attacks which is much easier with a summon that can boost charge bar. Those are all of the examples I have for this video, which means we've come to the end of this lesson. Hopefully this wasn't too long-winded or confusing. Just before we finish up here, just a few notes. Firstly, there's no problem simply copying other people's setups. If you theoretically had every relevant character, weapon and summon in the game, that would likely be preferable. Learning how to build your own grids is simply a tool that can help you find ways to clear content for whatever state your account is in. Secondly, although it may be tempting, do not trust the estimated damage calculator the game gives you. It can be used to gauge your damage somewhat but the best way to know if something will work is to test it. I've had plenty of times where I was confident a setup would work to find it was a bit short, and had to swap some grid pieces around because I didn't test it prior. Finally, there are plenty of resources out there other than this video if you look for them. If you've been around Grand Lou for a decent amount of time I'm sure you know of the wiki. The wiki is an absolute godsend and without it I personally would have a much more difficult time understanding the ins and outs of the game. There are also plenty of grid guides that go into far more detail than I do which are great reads, but I'm going to recommend Vasky's guide on the wiki. Outside of that are websites such as GBF Guide and GBF Party which are great resources for analysis and party setups respectively. I'll link all of them in the description. That's about it for me. Hope you learned something.